All right, let's start a live stream, guys. I'm just going to wait a few moments for a few people to join. Sorry about that. A lot of the time, these live streams take a few moments to get started. So we'll give it a couple of minutes, a few minutes. Um, yeah, cool. Sweet. Okay, perfect. Everything seems to be working well on my end. Um, today we are going to be building an Amazon listing from scratch for a private label product. And if I can do it all in under an hour, I'll be uh, very happy with that. If not, uh, so be it. I'm going to do, um, you know, a lot of Photoshop stuff for your images and things like that as well as simply setting up the, the basics. And going through a few things. I do wonder why my phone did not go off to tell me that I am live streaming. Okay. Perfect. So a uh, couple of people joining, I think. Hey, if you've joined, say hey. I, Funnily enough, I can't see who's actually in the live stream. But if you want to write a quick comment just to say hey, uh, please do so. We can get started. Do, 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 do. Perfect. So I got it here on my phone. That I am indeed live. So we're just going to give a couple more minutes for a few people to come into the live stream. Uh, I'll try my best to cut this stuff out afterwards for the video recording. Dennis and JND. What's up guys? Thanks for uh, thanks for engaging there. How are you guys doing? Sorry, I'm looking over here on screen. I should probably pop over here. So uh, yeah, I can see your uh, your chats on the live screen there as well. How are you guys? What are you guys up to today? Please do let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me, if you like all the flashy bells and whistles I've managed to add to my uh, live stream up there on the top of the screen. Today we're going to cover uh, pretty much setting up an Amazon listing from start to finish, you know, UPC codes, ASIN numbers, the whole shebang we're going to cover today, guys, and uh, pretty much just going to uh, hang out as well, I guess. Um, there is nobody at my house at the moment, so uh, I've got the peace and quiet that I can actually uh, go ahead and do this, spend an hour or so, maybe even more than an hour, whatever, it depends. And, uh, you know, guys, if you got to run, you got to run, that's fine. Um, it'll upload later on as a video anyway. Um, so I'll give it another couple of minutes. It seems someone else has joined us. If you have, say hey. we get this party started. And... Uh, yeah, my phone is telling me that I am indeed live as well. So, uh, cool. From Vancouver, Canada, just starting out in the research phase. Very cool. Um, I have a, I did a live streaming there, a live stream a few weeks ago. Maybe, uh, yeah, I think you were there and uh, sourcing products and stuff. So I'll definitely be doing more of that. Do you have any idea what category you want to go into? And have you checked out if that category is... Um, ungated and all that kind of stuff and will you be selling into the USA or strictly staying in Canada dum, 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 dum. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, yeah, so, oh, kitchen and dining, hopefully in the USA and Canada. Brilliant. Uh, I've just started, actually, I have it right here. You might be able to hear that ruffle. 
That is the poly bag on my brand new kitchen product. Uh, I won't show you guys yet, obviously, because uh, I haven't launched. I'm still waiting just to ship it over to the US. I got it last week, but there's a few barcodes and stuff to be put on it. Um, a video I put up during the week. I made a big boo-boo, made a big mistake. Well, I guess it's not that big, really, but I forgot to tell my supplier that if the opening on the poly bag is more than five inches, that they need to print the warning label that Amazon provides. Um, or an example of a warning label and uh, get that on the packaging. So totally forgot to do that. The bag came, poly bags came, nothing printed on them, nothing stuck on them. So um, I pretty much went to Amazon and bought stickers with the exact same warning label and stuck them on. So I've been doing that to a few hundred units before I send them over. <sighs> Sorry guys, uh, my table is a little bit funny at the moment, so if my, if I'm actually shaking back and forth on screen, uh, don't worry about it, I'll fix it up. So anyway, let's uh, let's make a start. You guys can hear me everything okay, and you can see everything okay, and those scrolling words aren't annoying the bejesus out of you guys. Do, 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 do. Cool. So there's only three of you guys watching. So this is like a little class, I suppose, more so than a, a live stream. You came up with a brand name so far. Is this generic enough? Enough. Mountaintop Gourmet. I like it. Yeah, I like it. For sure. Mountaintop Gourmet. Mm, definitely. I mean, Gourmet almost niches you down slightly into food. Which I guess makes sense because it's a kitchen product. Um, but if you, yeah, that's that's fine. Kitchen and dining gourmet, mountaintop gourmet. Yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, mountaintop. It's a good name for a sports and outdoors category as well. If you wanted to, um, you know, branch out a little bit. Do 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 do. Sorry, no. So much crap on my desktop. Do 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 do. That doesn't matter. Cool, no problem, Dennis. You're very welcome. Sorry, I didn't mean to hesitate when I heard the name. Just uh, I like to think it through, you know, a lot. So. Yeah, sounds good. Mountaintop. I like it, you know. Depends what you're going to sell, I guess. So, um, hope your research goes well and I can help you with that if you like. No problem. Um, have you got Jungle Scout? Have you got all those other softwares and stuff like that um, that you can check out your competition and stuff like that? Uh, with my brand new private label product, I it's currently sold in a four-pack all different colors. So, what I've done is I've I'm also selling a four pack, but I'm making them all the one color. So you can have a pack of reds, a pack of blues, a pack of whatever. Um, just to differentiate yourself. So just think about that when you're going into kitchen and dining. Some people have specific themes and colors in their kitchen and their home. They don't want one thing that's all different colors. They might just want one color. I'm also adding an item to the product as well. As well. So I would highly recommend improving upon the products that you're competing with because then you're just going to win. So I'm adding in an ebook and I'm adding in an extra actual piece. It's kind of a complimentary item as well. It just happens to fit in the poly bag too. So, so that's good. If you can improve the other products and make your own products, you're just going to smash the whole category. So that's good. <coughs> you know, silicone is cheap, all that kind of stuff. Hey, oh, I got a message from Fiverr. I think I got someone to set up a, cool. Yeah, so for my videos, I just wanted like a, you know, like a podcast intro, like welcome to the nighttime entrepreneur. So uh, he's just after sending me a message there, the, the voiceover dude uh, just said he'll have it for me soon. That's cool. Um, I love Fiverr.com. You guys should check that out, especially if you're going to be, you know, digital marketing your products and stuff like that. Fiverr.com. F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. 
Com. I actually have a gig myself. I just launched there the other day. Um, don't worry, this isn't a sales pitch, but I'm going to start critiquing people's Amazon listings. And uh, if they want me to, I'll be able to write um, write a little bit as well. So uh, write their titles and descriptions and just give them some help. Um, so yeah, I have a Fiverr gig. I think it's the first link in the description there, just under this, this video. Um... The video I go through on the on the gig itself isn't amazing. It's not an, it's not an amazing sales pitch, but hopefully it'll uh, a few people will want to get their listings optimized. Okay, perfect. Oh, right. Let's start. Uh, sorry, I need to take a deep breath. It's not used to talking on the microphone. Okay, so um, this is not the home page of Amazon. Sorry, just to give you a heads up, we just passed the 10 minute mark. There's no point waiting for other people. If they jump in, fantastic. If not, oh well. The main thing is you guys are here. So, uh, perfect. I'm not on the home page of Seller Central when you log in, okay? And excuse me for looking to my right. It's so rude. I should be looking up here. Because um, I'm capturing this screen, but I have another screen here. Thanks, Dennis. Just got your message there. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, so let's make a start. The reason I am not at my homepage here is pretty much because if I click on add a product, you'll see my product. So I have just pre-clicked that. I literally, you just go to your uh, top of Seller Central, click on inventory, and then up around here, when you're in that page, it'll say add a product. And here we are to list a new product. Perfect. So it may be in Amazon's catalog if you are trying to um, whoops okay so if it is an actual item that is on Amazon like if you're trying to list a book that already exists then you can pop the product name in here we're not going to be doing that because we are private labeling so down here you'll notice if it is not in Amazon's catalog create a new product listing okay so let's create a brand new product listing fantastic So guys, this takes us to the next page, which is to create a brand new product, and it's just going to want us to find a brand new category. So um, I've had a think, and I was talking to a subscriber who is going into a specific type of blanket. So I'm just going to do a generic type of blanket um, for the product here, okay? so. It's for babies, so we can search for the product category, or we can literally go down here and click through to baby products, um, baby apparel accessories, bathing and healthcare, seats, feeding, home safety, other diapering, toilet training. Okay, so I'm just going to have a check to see if baby blanket actually comes up as a subcategory. Nursery receiving blankets. Toddler blankets, nursery swaddling blankets. Um, so actually, the subscriber I was speaking to, it's not really for brand new babies, you know, so not newborns or anything. It is for toddlers and stuff. Um, it's actually a very cool product. Uh, so let's just go for toddler blankets. So it's going to found in home and garden, bed and bath, nursery bedding, toddler bedding, toddler blankets. The one underneath that is found in baby products, baby furniture and bedding, nursery bedding, toddler bedding, toddler blankets. So I'm going to pick the second one because I don't really want to be in home and garden. I want to be very, very specific here and put my uh, toddler blanket in inside baby products. Um, reason being parents will be searching around in this category looking to buy things for their kids more so than they would in home and garden you know they might they might still come across it it's not a massive deal and it is up to your to yourself but this is what i would do so i'm going to choose this one just double check down along yeah there's nothing else really perfect there you go so that's our category you just click that and now it's going to ask you to create your listing all right if you have any questions so far guys just pop them in the chat okay so this is where we go next and this looks like there's a lot of problems but there actually isn't any problems at all so 
Um, first thing is first, it's going to ask us for the product name. And I am going to just call it TNTE, so the nighttime, the nighttime entrepreneur. So it's a terrible name, don't worry. Um, toddler blanket. Okay, so that's what's actually going to be your title on the page. This is changeable at any point, but just while I'm setting up, I'm going to leave it at, at this. You know, what I would generally do in future is come back and say, toddler blanket, 100% safe. You know, check these things out. Uh, whoops, safe for children of ages, whatever, with sensitive skin, whatever, ages of two to five, six with sensitive skin, yada yada yada. So there is a, a way to write really good titles and we'll get into that, but for now we just want to uh, actually just create the listing. So the Nighttime Entrepreneur Toddler Blanket 100% safe for children of ages two to six with sensitive skin. So that's an okay product title. I'll come back and work on the grammar and the capitalization and stuff like that. It does not matter. So the manufacturer pretty much is going to ask you who the manufacturer was. You can pop in the manufacturer there. If you source it yourself and create it yourself, then you can put in yourself. And let's just go for the manufacturer. Hmm. Don't actually use blanket manufacturer as the manufacturer. This is just for the live stream. Uh, the brand, okay. An alpha new, oh, sorry, up to 100 characters. T-N-T-E blankets, or as you said earlier, Dennis, um, like a more generic name so you can create more products off the back of it so you don't have to write blankets you can just write TNT is the brand minimum manufacturer age remake age recommended so I would say one year olds or maybe two year olds to match above and the minimum unit of measure select one of the following options months years two years so this is where a lot of people get stuck. You need to have a product ID, which is any valid GC ID, UPC or EAN number. You are going to pop your number in here and you're going to select what type it is. Now, I always just use UPC codes. There's just no hassle with them. They're pretty easy. Um, so we're going to use a UPC code. Now, the reason we need any sort of UPC code is so Amazon can pretty much translate that UPC code into an ASIN or an ASIN number for them in their warehouse. And it's the ASIN number that you're actually going to have to stick on your product or have printed on your packaging, pretty much. That's what Amazon need to scan. Okay. <coughs> now, there is a lot of people who will tell you to go to eBay and buy whatever UPC code you find, you know, from whoever, it doesn't matter. But Amazon are 100% moving towards GS1 certified or GS1 supplied UPC codes. So, you know, you can, we can go and buy GS1 barcodes. Sorry. GS1 UPC. So there you go. GS1, you can go over here and you can buy a UPC code. I actually bought mine off Nationwide barcode, but they are like certified sellers of GS1. So pretty much you just go buy one, you know? Um, and we will, I do actually have a spare one, so we are, I am gonna go ahead and actually use one of them. I bought five and only used three or something like that. So you can come here and buy a barcode. Uh, I'll show you now how mine came. It comes in like a zip file. I should probably be careful showing you all these, it doesn't really matter, but it comes in a little zip file and they come as a JPEG so you can print it on stuff and then it just comes as a word format as well so you can just copy and paste, copy and paste it pretty much. Um, let's see if this works, nope, perfect. So anyway, go buy your UPC codes. This is the website I went to, Nation, 
nationwidebarcode.com forward slash order hyphen barcodes. And there you see the price. You want to buy one, it's twelve dollars. You want to buy a thousand, it's two hundred and twenty. You know, you can decide for yourself if you're just starting out. Then buy five for twenty-five. Why not? Just to play around with. What's the point in buying one in case you uh, make a little boo-boo or make a little mistake? So, how many do you want? Blah blah blah. Go buy them, and they download. So, once you buy that, we go back to our add a product page, and I'm just gonna pop over here. Two nine two. There's my little barcode there. I'm just going to write down exactly what it is. So, my UPC is... I don't really mind you guys seeing it. I'm never going to use it. So, 0, 4507982292. Good God, I hope I haven't used that before. Okay, drawers. A positive or whole number. So I don't really know what this means. I haven't really ever created a baby blanket before. Um, so let's go check it out. A positive, a positive whole number. How many drawers? So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to put in one here and that's fine. But um, just be careful with stuff like this. So I would just go... Uh, Just pop it in, something might come up. <laughs> no, that's actually just... Whatever. Okay, we'll come back to that if we need B. If you guys know, let me know. Zero? Ah. Cool. Number of bulb sockets. Zero as well, I guess. Okay. Um, variations. What's the offer? So you can skip the offer and add it later if you like. Um, I'm just going to put it in. I'm not really scared, you know. It's fine. Like It's not a big deal. So you can make your own unique identifier if you're going to have lots of different product numbers. So something like that. Quantity. Doesn't matter. You put in as many as you want there, and then your price. So let's just say nineteen ninety nine. Whatever, that's fine. Uh, images, we can just. I'm just gonna do this right, baby blanket. Sorry, toddler blanket. Do, 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 do. Go to images. Um, yeah, let's just put in something like this. 2000 by 2000 is good. Now, this is Walmart's actual picture, so you know I'm not actually going to use this for anything. This is just for an example. That's not really nice. So, this one. Save image as. Um, do, 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 sorry, blanket. Sorry, guys, it is late over here in Ireland. <sighs> okay, let's just put in a main image just for fun, and uh, it should be somewhere. Do, 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 do. Blanket. Let's just put one in. That's fine. Come on. Description. We must put in a description. Now this description is not your bullet points that you're going to see on the listing, but you will see it further down on the page in the listing, and that's where people come to, to re read your description. If you go ahead and actually register your brand on Amazon and get brand registered, you can avail of enhanced brand content, and once you create that, this description remains indexed by Amazon search engines, but it doesn't actually show to the to the human eye. So this blanket 100% yada yada yada, you can work on your sales copy, okay? Um, you'll know exactly what to write and you'll know what your supplier wrote and all of that kind of stuff as well. Going to your keywords, um, this is really important now. 
there's webinars and all the experts on Amazon are currently changing their mind on this uh, little bo these little boxes here previously you would be able to put in 1000 characters um, across these five boxes and they would all get indexed but now people are saying that it's cut way down to like 400 or something like that so when you put in your search terms here it's kind of important that you put words in kind of the series of words that people would type but you don't need commas or anything like that um, so let's just go for other blanket first um, also you don't need to say blanket again you know so soft baby clothing child safe Bum, 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 bum. Child slave attire. So, guys, you can go to thesaurus.com and just type in a word, and it'll give you a load of different alternatives for that word. That's a really good idea to do. And also, what you can do to look at search terms. This is kind of a big tip, to be honest. To look at search terms. Um, that people are actually typing into Amazon. Sorry guys, to look at search terms that people are actually typing into Amazon, just go to Amazon and you can see. So I just typed in blanket up here in the search bar. Blanket for baby, kids, perfect. So use both of those. Blanket for baby, blanket for kids, stuff like that. So baby, kids, you know, I'll, I'll show you. So thesaurus, type in kid. In we go. Kid, boy, infant, daughter, child, girl, son, teenager, youngster, youth, juvenile, you know. Um, it's funny you didn't say. No, it doesn't. Put in. If you like one of those and you want to think it would expand further, pop that in. So, adolescent, minor, um, youth, stuff like that. So, yeah, you'll get all those words there and you pop them in here. Uh, you don't need commas, as I said. And yeah, that's fine. Remove that one, remove that one. And finally, more details. The maximum age, I mean, there's not really any maximum age. The only thing stopping you there would be size. So I'm just gonna stop it at. Hmm. Right. Item dimensions, so, you know, let's just go for, uh, I mean, <laughs> we're a metric, I guess, so. Uh, Let's just put in a normal for a toddler. I mean, three feet, three feet, and the width. I mean, nothing. It's 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 a towel, you know. However, if you are packaging it and folding it, it may be, you know, bulked up a little bit. So maybe it's point a tenth of a foot. Who knows? You'll know yourself. You gotta measure it out in the package. Don't open up the blanket and you know it's like wafer thin the package so that's what the item is it's when it's folded up and when it's in the warehouse so um whoa god okay sorry that's not right then is it um so let's just say it's maxed in 12 by 12 and then four Let's say it's a big towel and it's folded up a few times, whatever. 12, 12, 4. Um, weight, I mean, oh God, I'm terrible at this stuff, but... <laughs> two pounds, I guess. Guys, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, Dennis, you're in Canada. You, like, you tell me how many pounds. We don't use pounds here. Um, maximum units of measurement, yeah, there's years, that's fine. Safety warning, so you can pop your safety warning in there. Uh, I do recommend doing that. Um, this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Fabric type, so you can... It's cotton. 100% cotton. Whatever you want to put in there. Just make sure it's correct. Specific uses for product. Wearing. I guess sleeping in stuff like that, but generally I would put in wearing and then what material type it is, you know So you can find it there these things you don't have to put in 
but the more details you put into the back end, which is what we're doing now, the more information Amazon has about your product. So if it's coming between you and another seller, it's going to show the one that has the most stuff. Cool. Save and finish. So thanks for suggesting custom change the catalog and all the Amazon. Perfect. All right. So that's fine. Perfect. So that is your listing. You have it in your inventory. And if you want to go to your actual Amazon page, this is it. And there's pretty much nothing on it right now because you don't have images. So let's go ahead and do some images and make this look better. You know, so here's all the details you did before. First to review this product, two pounds. Now, uh, Dennis, just for you, just to let you know that this is not how it looks in kitchen. Um, let's just find a kitchen. Oh God, what's the most overused thing? Oh yeah. A goddamn spatula. 8,648 results for spatula. So, unless you got an amazing spatula, don't really bother. But um, let me just see, let me just see, you know. God, you see all this stuff on um, Alibaba and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is how it actually looks, whereas our one now looks like this, you know, um, it's, oh, it's a little bit, oh god, it's a bit mad, so it's like just a few pictures here, but the kitchen stuff actually looks like this, it looks like, I like these kitchen style listings a little bit better, um, bum, 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 bum. yeah, nice, thought you would have picked garlic press, <laughs> oh god, those garlic presses, let's see how, how much comes up for garlic press crazy amount I mean it's still possible to to do well on garlic presses but I mean you could probably go uh, talk to all the sellers of all the failed garlic presses and get them for pretty much nothing and then just I don't know sell them off whatever for nothing like god who's the best seller in garlic what garlic peeler that's kind of cheating oh my god Four thousand, four and a half thousand results. I guess it's not as bad as the other ones. But let's see how much these guys are making. Roughly, uh, here's a little disclaimer. I'm about to click the Jungle Scout button. Some people say that this is uh, useless and crappy, but it's not that bad to be honest. Um. Whoa. Whoa. Fifty-two grand a year. Or sorry, excuse me, a month. Pugh, on garlic presses. Uh, 36 grand, 7 grand, 4 grand, 18 grand. Average sales, sorry, it says average sales up here. Where is this calculator gone? Oh yeah, average sales, 996, 996 of them. Multiply that by the average price. So on average... 13,455 dollars and 96 cents a month on these garlic presses so i mean i guess people love garlic but uh what an overused product guys uh but they're cool i guess i mean can they be repurposed for anything else i don't know fidget spinners is the jeez sorry i shouldn't this i shouldn't take uh the name in vain but uh God, all you have to do is type in F in the search bar and you get fidget spinner. If you haven't heard of fidget spinners, you obviously live under a rock. So when you type in fidget spinners, you get all of this stuff. <sighs> Whatever, I don't know, I don't have one, but I think I should get one. I click Jungle Scout on this page and let's let's have a laugh. 22k, 20 grand, 51, 20,000, 308. <laughs> don't know what's happening there. Uh, 84,000, 35,000, like a month. Fidget spinners are crazy on Amazon right now. Oh God, this guy is sponsoring his fidget spinner, so he must absolutely be spending a lot. Cost per click, cost per click, cost per click. Mmm, the temptation to click it, but I won't. Um, 
Okay, anyway, let's get back to this. So, that's pretty much it. Okay, guys, now, you just put in all the information you're brought through that process in the back end of Amazon. And once you get that UPC code, that's kind of the only kind of hurdle that we've come across. Once you pop that in, that's fine. Um, the next thing is images. So let's go do some image work now. You can go to fiverr.com and get people to do your images. You can go to Upwork. You can get a professional photographer. You can get whatever. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna do a little bit of this. I hope you don't mind on screen. If this is absolutely something you just could not be bothered to look at, let me know. But I'm gonna just do a do a very quick like product uh, photo for the blanket or something like that. Okay. Now Amazon guidelines, they say to do images of one thousand by one thousand, so that's a minimum. So we can go to fifteen hundred pixels, but whoops, by fifteen hundred pixels. So that's just a square image, and we will pop back over here. And here's the blanket. So um, let's say we want our main image to have all of the blankets in it or something like that. Um, we downloaded the first blanket and now we want the next blanket. So I'm just going to show you guys how to. Uh, so these are luckily, you know, all white backgrounds, but I'll, I'll show you how to cut these out as well and make this white because it's not white in the background. Yeah, so we'll take this one for example very quickly, okay? Let's pretend this is our blanket. It's a horrible blanket. Blanket 2. Save. It's a JPEG file, that's fine. So, Photoshop. Once we save the file down from Google, we just need to go to um, File, Place, because we're placing the image. We go and find that horrendous blanket, and we put it right here. So, Amazon says that your main image must cover 80% of the picture so I would actually just squeeze this out a little bit the reason being I like to make it as big as it can be so that when customers are scrolling through and they see all these little ones they see yours and it's like bang there's a big listing something's happening there <coughs> so we will hit enter <coughs> Now with Photoshop you can hold control and press plus and minus to zoom and all that if you really need to get nitty gritty. I'm going to do it kind of quick and dirty here. Um, I would grab the quick selection tool and click it. And uh, you know I probably need this to be a little bit bigger. So I'll click up here, make it bigger. Maybe a little bit bigger. Mm, yeah that's fine. And we're going to select everything. So literally all I'm doing is holding my finger down um, on the left click. And if I was to like spill over, I just press Alt and then do the same thing and it kind of deletes. So I'm just going to get the whole thing. Okay, so you see I've kind of gone over the lines a little bit. That's fine, just Photoshop had a tough time kind of picking up those lines. So I'm just going to press the Alt button, click in here, and you see it kind of knows as well. So it's taken all that back for me. Sorry guys, I'm a heavy breather. Um, mm, 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 no, we want that. We want that. We don't want this. So I'm literally just holding out and getting rid of... Oh, I'm spilling in again now. One sec. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Let's get right in there. Perfect. Photoshop is a funny one. Perfect. I'll get back in there in a sec. So it kind of knows now that it, it was bold. Yes. Um, yeah, so tip number one with Photoshop is to be a little bit patient. It's crazy software. So I'm going to zoom right in here because Photoshop is acting the fool. There we go.
Okay. That's the best I can do with that image. Um, when you're taking your images, uh, do your best to, you know, take it in a really... If you can get natural light, fantastic, but with a white background or something like that and some lighting if you can. If not, you're just going to have to extract the background. So this is kind of uh, the poor man's version of Amazon Pictures. So once you've everything selected with the quick selection tool, <coughs> you just want to press Control and C for copy. So it's copied to the clipboard somewhere. I know you didn't see anything happen there on screen. And then you go down here on the right hand side. You can't see that, sorry, because my picture's in the way. But it literally is just a little button that says create new layer. And the little layer is created. Actually, I got to show you. I got to show you this, guys. I can't not show you this. So. Let's just do it over here like this for a sec. Whoops. Okay, you can see that, that's fine. So literally click, I'm sorry, you're on this layer, do that, click, create new layer, and pretty much click Control and V to paste. So now you can see that right down here, there's two layers. Sorry, I wanna delete this layer up here. This one actually doesn't have the background, this one does. So what we're gonna do is just turn this one off. Okay. So, one, oh sorry. Once we turn that off, you'll notice the background is now completely transparent. So there's your product, done. Um, Photoshop starts up with a blank, with a background there. You can keep that in there and save it as a JPEG and that'll be white, but I'll show you an alternative way just in case that was never there. Go to File, Place Again. Let me find my plain white background. So I would just download a plain white background from Google and um, use it for a lot. I use it a lot. Plain white background. Select it and just put it over the whole picture. And then over here on the right hand side you'll see that the plain white background is on top of the blanket so just grab the blanket and push it up and there you go so now it's fully white and uh, we will save that save as we'll throw it on the desktop we will call it blanket shopped because it's photoshopped and you'll see here it's going to want to save it as a Photoshop file. Don't let it. Um, click JPEG and then save. Press OK. Let it do its thing in the background. Go back to your listing. And, uh, oh God, it's a pain in the behind now. Um, that. Oh, I want to say a bad word so bad. Um, it's actually just telling me I'm not actually, um, what you call it, approved for this category, so I can't make too many changes, which is annoying. But what I will show you is, I will, I, I don't care, I, I sell this other product, I'll show you this, and I'll show you exactly how to do images for it as well. Um, so literally what you would do is click on images, choose file, Go to Blanket Shop, pop it in there, and there it is. And you can do that for all of your pictures. You don't have to have a professional photographer take them, you know. Just get good lighting and you can extract the thing from the, extract the image from the, um, from the grey background or the crappy background that you do. Uh, I'm not going to click save on that because it is another product. Um, sorry about that, guys. I totally eluded me that I wasn't, uh, what you call it, um approved for that category. Now I can go ahead and request approval. I don't really need to do that or want to do that um, because I don't, I'm don't. i not going to get into this. Um, so yeah, first thing you need to do is request approval and then they will, I mean, I'm going to click it just to see what happens if they ask me for anything special. Selling application for a brand you're requesting to sell Sorry, you're going to sell an G to E at least one purchase invoice for products from the manufacturer or distributor. So if that's you, that's fine. And one letter from TNT authorizing you to sell our products. That's fine. So that's easy. If it is you, then those things are easy to get. Send them in. 
send them in an email or give them a quick call or whatever and then once you do that they will let you sell that product sorry i should have just done a, a, a kitchen product there for you dennis um yeah okay don't need to do that so pretty much you can put in 10 10 different um images well, i'm going to sign off pretty soon but there's one massive thing i want to tell you and this is just really important when you're setting up your listing okay when you're setting up your listing you put in your vital info your variations okay you cannot set up a listing and add variations after or variation types if you're going to sell one blanket now but you want to go ahead and sell three different colors of it in future but you're not there yet i would absolutely you absolutely have to click on this variations tab and it's different here obviously for me because i have products here but it'll ask you how are they what is the variation theme okay and when they ask you a variation theme you can choose their different colors or different sizes or different colors and sizes or different fittings or whatever options they give you but fill this out first time because if you go and build a listing without doing this that listing gains ranking it gains power it gains reviews it gains all this stuff on amazon and what if you want to just make another color or your customers want a new size or something like that you're going to have to go and make a brand new listing with no ranking whatsoever nothing it's horrendous so even if you're only selling one color like for my new product i'm selling four different colors but i've added in uh, six and i just won't send in the two other colors because they don't exist i don't have them so always choose a variation theme and just create a couple as well once you create this variation theme you can always come back let's say i do one here you'll have this little bo uh, box down here and it will say color or size i will just type in green and here i will type in green and i will add that variation and the reason i can add that variation is because on the day i set up this product in amazon i chose a variation theme so i can add more colors now or if i pick sizes i could add more sizes you know so that's just if you take one thing away from today and you're about to set up an amazon listing on day one even if you're not thinking you're going to have different colors and styles and sizes 100 percent, you should choose a variation theme you can put in 10 different types of variations it doesn't matter because it's not going to show up on amazon as a live product if you haven't shipped it to the warehouse or if you haven't enabled it you know so always add a variation theme day one and that's just a lifesaver because your product line will expand and you might want to put in as i said different colors different sizes i can't remember what the rest of them were um, let's see if there's a couple of others here just for interest how do i change variation theme can you add a variation theme to an existing no there's bad news on that one i'm afraid help creating different variation themes no nothing to help you um yeah okay so really no 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 whatever is that important that no 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 yeah okay perfect and another tip uh before we go guys is when you do add your variations every variation i won't stay down here too long because you'll see all my numbers and stuff um every variation needs a upc so one UPC code for your listing and one UPC code for each variation. So if you're selling three different color blankets, that's four UPCs you need. Okay, I know, silly. Um, Dennis, is this the same as a two pack or a three pack? Yeah, so you can do that as well as a variation. You can, What I believe one of the variation themes is, you know, um, two packs and three packs but a lot of the time you could stick with one packs and just offer a promotion for two you know that kind of way because that means you've actually sold two items so 
you can do that your way uh, or the way you're saying there and add in a variation as a two pack, a three pack, a four pack. But what I always do to help rankings and sales rankings is I would always sell one packs or whatever and make a promotion to for people to buy two or buy three, even if it's two for one or three for the price of one and a half, whatever it is. Amazon doesn't rank you based on how many purchases are made. It ranks you on how many items got sold. So if you have someone coming and they just pick up a three pack, great, whatever. But if you have someone coming and they buy three units, three items, that helps your ranking a lot more. Uh, Mr. Diaz, can I sell my very first product with my own PL? You can. I absolutely did. I'm in Ireland, so I wasn't going to start doing, you know, retail arbitrage and sending books and stuff over and or music and video games or on a different network or whatever the hell. So um, 100% you can start with your own PL. Now, there is a current ban on becoming brand registered on Amazon. I have a video on that. It's quite ambiguous because we don't know what's happening at the moment. They're saying in order for you to become brand registered, you may need to submit a trademark in the US very soon. However, that doesn't mean you can't sell PL. You can sell private label products. You can launch your private label business. No problem. Becoming brand registered is just like a little, a tiny little extra bit of protection. And also it's just, you know, you can do enhanced brand content and stuff like that as well. So, um, yeah. Dennis, what part of Ireland? I am in Dublin at the moment on the East Coast, but I'm from a tiny little place called County Clare on the West Coast. Have you ever been? Or I'm pretty sure if you're in Canada, you have been infiltrated by the Irish in the last few years. Sorry about that. Cool. Uh, dudes, I hope those answers were okay for you. You can always contact me through the um, through YouTube anyway. You can go to anyone's channel and find their email address, you know. Um, feel free to ask any more questions. Um, I hope that was okay for you guys today. Just give you an insight. Just kind of show you on screen before you go and do it yourself exactly what it is. It's, it's no big thing. And, uh, yeah. You worked in Ireland for 10 weeks for the hospitals had a wonderful time pretty drunk i'd say uh, <laughs> um cool man yeah my uh my fiance is a nurse in one of the major hospitals up here in dublin so that's pretty much why we live up here um cool man i've never been to canada my fr- my friend is uh just back from toronto so he enjoyed that as well yeah guinness man <laughs> guinness is the stuff for sure uh too much of it is a bad thing as well, though. Yeah, no, I got to go over to Canada. I, I go to the U.S. with work. Uh, I've been doing it like once a year uh, just to random conferences and stuff like that. But um, I want to go to... Well, I've driven Route 66 as well and stuff like that, but I've never been to Canada. And uh, yeah, I also want to go to China, which I'm sure you guys do as well if you're on this Amazon buzz. So definitely want to go to China. Uh, I'm in a few different Facebook groups and stuff. Um, where they're planning China trips, but I'm just not ready yet. So, you know, I want to do a co- like a, another year, another couple of years of Amazon selling on my own and then head over to like the Canton Fair or whatever in China. So who knows? Maybe we'll all be ready, uh, ready to go. We'll do some sort of nighttime entrepreneur crazy trip to China. Uh, who knows what the future holds? So perfect. I'm going to go back to my inventory here. I'm going to click on this and I'm actually going to delete it. Delete products and listings. <laughs> oh, sorry. Maybe I'll do it over here just to be safe. Perfect. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Yeah, me too, man. If we can get to 10k a month, definitely head to China. I mean, it's not, it's not that crazy. And there are groups that go. You know, so yeah, for sure. If you're making 10k a month on the prices we're paying from Alibaba or wherever, now I mean, when you go to China, it's going to be you save twice the money. You'll be, you know, 
you'll be making more than 10k a month then so that would be great um so dudes did i cover everything you wanted me to cover today i just wanted to do just short of an hour of kind of showing people what it's like inside amazon uh seller central that it's not crazy or um terrible um Another thing as well, when you're setting up, I always put a high price just before I ship my items to Amazon. I'm go I put like a crazy price on them. And the reason for that is Amazon would have to reimburse you if they lose it. So they're damn sure not going to lose a product if it's $50 each or $100 each, you know. So that's what I always do. I always do that as well. I can't say that officially I can't say that, but, you know, it, this is what's been happening. So. You didn't hear it from me. Um, all right, guys. Any more questions or queries, or if you want to see how Photoshop works, my uh, how I'm going to market my products and stuff like that, let me know how I have marketed my products. Ask me those questions as well. You can comment as soon as this video goes up. You can comment on it, um, or on any uh, video. Oh, cool! You saw the yeah the pipe cleaners one. Yeah, I, I might do some more sourcing to be honest. Um, but yeah, that just gives you an idea of how to. Uh, how to um, look for products. God, sorry guys, it's like 11.08 here, p.m., and I'm just so tired, and uh, it's Sunday night, and there's work tomorrow. God damn it. <coughs> but yeah, um, continue on the search, guys, and definitely spend a lot of time sourcing your products, and uh, you know yourself, you, the, this YouTube channel is here as a support for you as well. The nighttimeentrepreneur.com is there. Um, my new Fiverr gig is there. You can go for that if you want in future. And um, yeah, any other stuff, you know, Google related stuff, email marketing stuff, social media stuff. That's all going to come as well. It just it takes a while to uh, to get the channel off the ground. God, I wonder where are we at now? Yeah, so I'm closing in on 200 subscribers, but I mean, uh, we've only been doing this for a short while. If you guys would like to share this with a friend or tag a friend or something like that, absolutely do. I would love that. Um, yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks for being a part of the live stream. It was brilliant. Cheers, guys. Thanks a million. Uh, peace.